my point was to make sure you guys knew that my degree is not in meteorology, it's in chemistry. So, but the other physical science that's taught here is um, astronomy. So I get to teach astronomy and meteorology and chemistry. So, and the physics is taught by somebody else. So, are we okay with all that? Astron astronomy, are we talking like Scorpio? Um, that's astrology. astrology. Ast astronomy would be the science, the science of how those stars get together to make those, have, have formed, which ultimately make those patterns in the sky that we call constellations. Yeah, so, so yeah. Yeah. stars and the sun and the moon and the planets, study of the science of those things. The universe, yeah. other galaxies. Yeah, again, that's kind of... <laughs> so um, one of the things about weather is it's downright dramatic. So you're just like, I am so glad I'm not them, right? Stuck in a car. But it happens. One thing that I think is cool about weather is it has a leveling effect. So no matter whether you are um, you know, have all the money in the world or whether you are kind of don't have a lot of money, you're like, hey, the same weather events affect us. <laughs> so all classes get affected. Um, so if you're like me, how many people look at the weather, what the weather's going to be in the morning? I think I asked that question, yeah. And so maybe you're filling out your weather logs. Um, let's go ahead, in case I forget, because I said I was going to. I did a little bit more looking into the weather logs. And let's fill out the one for today, eh? Um, so pull out your weather logs if you got them handy. And what I decided, you know, good, bad, or otherwise, I kind of wimped out. And I am going to go back to the Weather Channel, okay? So the one I'm going to take you to is the Weather Channel. And I have the address, just kind of blocked out up there. The address is up here. It's um, weather.com. See if it'll make it big for me. Do you have a question back there? Or? Okay. So if you, in case you can't see that, it's weather.com. Okay, and so... That's the Weather Channel. I'm going to go ahead and stick in uh, Keokuk's zip code. Somebody in my night class had a really good question last night. They said, hey, what if I'm not in Keokuk and I need to fill out my weather log? You have two choices. You can either look at what Keokuk's doing or whatever your hometown is, or you can look at the place you're at. You know, the, that's fine, too. So you can definitely keep filling it out. Okay, so let's see if we can fill in all of those blanks. And I have my heat candy. Okay. So I know you can see the current temperature there, but let me go ahead and click. I'm going to click on the 37. Okay. Maybe. Is that what I wanted to do? I even did a dry run of this. Come on. Okay, I clicked on the 37. So what's the current temperature? 37, thank you. Um, let me click on current details. And let's see, what is the dew point temperature? It is 29 degrees, okay. Uh, the next column, what is the humidity? And it was actually back to this one right here. Can you see humidity down here? It's kind of small. I'm saying 73 also. <laughs> I know, 73% humidity. The next column, I know, it's the background picture or something. The next column, um, actually, I like this because finally we can get tendency. So the next two columns go together. The next column is barometric pressure. What's the barometric pressure? 30.16 inches. Then the next column says what's its tendency. So the column after that is falling. You can either write the word falling or down arrow, okay? I think down arrow would be a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> but I like this site because it tells you that. Thank goodness. Um, okay, wind speed, what do you think? I think you have to go back to the one back here. It's kind of hiding in the blue again. Oh, my gosh, really? I think it's... I think it's six to ten. No, you're right. I see six to ten miles per hour. So you try to highlight it. I am. Um, it would change the background color. It would change the background. You might be able to see what it is. 
but direction, you need the direction of the wind, too. Yeah, that helps. Thank you. That's a good it's idea. South at 10 miles per hour. Very good. Not south. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah. Range for the... Yeah, I was like... Okay, so where you put 6 to 10, put 10. <laughs> and then the direction is south. Ooh. Does that mean maybe warm? Just to be warm. We're up. I'm down with that. Okay, cloud cover, guys? None. None? <laughs> Yay! It's clear. Now, for the next two columns, the record high and low, I am going to go to weather underground. So it's W U N D E R G R O U N D, weatherunderground.com. And I've already got it pulled up here. Okay. So I'm going to write it on the board because it has a forward slash history. So um, I think it's www.wunderground. This is to get the historic data, or the records more specifically, um, dot history. And I think we talked about it before. And this will pull you up to a website you need to put in your zip code. So um, I think we talked about it before. If you miss a day, you know, this is a redeeming possibility. So that'll bring you up here. Now, as I scroll down, we know then what our record, we know the high and low and the date. Okay. Is your URL, I think you need a dot com after the underground slash. Oh, system. thank you. I think you're right. Dot C-O-M. Very good. I had a consultant. I'm doing computer degree. Sorry. Okay. All right, so in the column for the record, thank you. In the column for the record high, what would you put? 62. 62, okay. I'd go ahead and throw in the year, whatever. It doesn't ask me. Yeah, 1986. And the record low, negative 18 Fahrenheit. That would be nice, but 62. That's right. Is that the year we had that big blizzard, too? I don't know. My parents tell me about having the sign of the car. Bad weather in 77? Yeah. Bad. The design on the car to make sure the, book, the files didn't hit the car like there's a <laughs> because the snow Things was you high. have to do. <laughs> so, are there any questions about that? What about the last column? It says precipitation. Zero. Zero. So, let me know if you have any snags with that. But that's kind of that's how you would fill out today's. And I know that yesterday's had a blank for tendency and record high and low. You actually could still get the record high and low for the 14th, or I guess that Wednesday. was the 13th, yeah. Um, so, but you can leave it blank too. I'm kind of flexible if you haven't noticed. I'm flexible, but I'm not. <laughs> okay, so here are some dramatic pictures about stuff basically going on in the atmosphere that kind of gets your adrenaline going, right? Okay. Now you're like, what does, yeah, what does this have to do with the at atmosphere? What do you think um, fires have to do with the atmosphere? Oh, when it's super dry, you don't have a lot of Dry, that was what I'm saying. They dry drought kind of spawns mm -hmm. conditions for fires. And Alaska's fire tornado. Alaska's fire tornadoes, they can create like little tornadoes. Is, mm -hmm. Yes, they can. Weather crater, high, low effect, that I suppose is spinning. Yeah, have you ever heard of the Santa Ana winds? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So coupled with drought, those prevailing winds actually can make some conditions that, yeah, they feed the fires and they help spread the fires. Oh, yeah. Who took the picture? What? Oh, I don't know. So speaking of getting your adrenaline going, this actually is, you know, uh, from 1980 to 2010, so it's not, not necessarily current. But there are two lines there. The blue line for that given year is, is kind of relative number of major weather events, okay? So up to nine major weather events that year. And the red line is how much damage was caused in that year in terms of dollars. Yes. Was it 05 the uh, F5 tornado? Yes, what was 05 was uh, a nasty year. What, what did uh, New Orleans face in 05? And, and the, the ice storm too, if I remember. Yeah. To me, what what stands out is the devastation with Katrina, and there was Wilma, and I wasn't you know, directly affected. It was Katrina, a bad thing. So 2002 was the I think that was the tornado that went through 
2002. I'm going to go to. Hey, I'm going to go to a website here in a minute, and I posted it on my Twitter feed that actually kind of would list things like the um, the events you're talking about. So let's look at, look for those here in a minute. So this is kind of a similar thing, kind of a different span uh, figure from your textbook. Um, and it goes, um, it's listed by the newest event to the oldest event, okay? So it goes to 2007, not 2010, and it starts at 2002, and it kind of lists some uh, damage and fatalities. Um, yeah, and if you're like me, I think that, I think, um, you know, 1800 is kind of low. You know, I think it was hard to get a number on the fatalities there. And there's two perhaps unknown with the drought and the two droughts actually. Uh, well, yeah, the widespread drought in the spring of 06 and the uh, entire year of 07. Yeah, of yep, it's interesting. Those both are, they are, they are really unknown. I'm, I put a question mark next to Katrina fatalities because I think, uh, from what I've read and heard on documentaries, they they really hard hard to hard to get it down. People scattered. What's that? People scattered in Katrina. Yeah. Never came back. Some people yeah. really document casualties. I know it. It you know it puts a yeah it puts a kind of a serious tone on the whole. Oh, I think I'd like to chase a tornado, but but I think we should chase our tornadoes. <laughs> Not to get credit in this class, but Aww. so this no, actually. To get in this class. Yeah. Okay. For that. As long as I'm using a college vehicle. <laughs> uh, no, not authorized. So this website, when it comes up, will kind. Of, let's look for um, 2002. Well, now that looking at that, it says 03. So I'm thinking maybe it was 03. It was literally the day of graduation. What you're describing is sometimes we have. Um, a season of tornadoes and then no tornadoes. You know, you've probably heard of tornado outbreaks, okay, or just bad. The thing about it, have you ever heard of the butterfly effect where kind of it's little things far away that actually can make disturbances that, you know. So the weather, the condition of the atmosphere is very complicated. Um, but what I started to say is, like, if you have a bad season for tornadoes, it's, it's a global thing. If you look around... Folks in all other parts of the world can say, oh, well, this is happening or this is happening. And if you've heard of the La Nino, El Nina, I'm sorry, El, so the Nino, El Nino, Nino, La Nina, <laughs> okay. um, the, that cycle, they go back and forth, that actually is a player in kind of how we have this sort of weather, droughts, or we have flooding. It's a player, but it's not the only, it, only ticket. We draw a lot of our warm air up from the Gulf. Mm -hmm. causes the, and then also... Yeah, she's years. saying that, um, um, and that's more of a prevailing situation, kind of it's always there, kind of we draw the warm, right. at different times of the year, we draw that warm, moist air up from the Gulf, yeah, and then the jet stream can go lower, and then we draw that cold uh, cold air from the north, so. Those two fronts meet. Yes, where they meet, we get excitement. So is there anything you guys want to look at, per se, here, or just... This is, I like this site because it breaks, it's a little more, um, somebody was, let's look up Wayland. Do they? So would it have like the actual, the top, the site here? Let's see. 05 for the ice storm? Yeah. Does it, it go back that far? I can't. No. Midwest drought. Oh, it doesn't have it. Doesn't mean it wasn't there. Severe storms and tornadoes. Here's storms and hail. They may not think ice storms are important. <laughs> <laughs> Three counties lost power for about ten days. I, I'm I'm kind of kidding. You know, um, trying to see where it's the Midwest. Mid, uh, Southeast Midwest tornadoes. Mm -hmm. But these are the weather events. And like 07, I'm just kind of looking at like the number. It had three hits, you know. So, I don't know. It's just interesting. You know, it's only measured in billions. So, it didn't even cost billions of damage. <laughs> the casualties could have been major, but it didn't cost billions yeah. of damage. Yeah. Yeah. They have to hit, it have to, has to kick a threshold. 
effort to make that list, not our People list. <laughs> yeah, I hear ya. I hear ya. So, um, meteorology is the study of the Earth's atmosphere, and the Earth's atmosphere. We're going to talk. We're going to talk more about actually in this this chapter. We're going to say what's in the Earth's atmosphere. It's gases and it's also particulates and you know, but Earth's atmosphere. But the reason the Earth has an atmosphere is because of gravity. So um, I mentioned that I teach um, astronomy, and I don't talk a lot about it, but there is definitely on other planets that have an atmosphere, weather. they definitely have weather patterns too. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go so. to he doesn't want to go to Jupiter. <laughs> You're fine. Have you ever seen the, um, have you ever seen the dust devil here on, on a dust You're devil's just kind of, <laughs> have you ever been walking around and seen like a, like a plastic bag mm -hmm. kind of be sucked up? It's a good chance if you saw the little swirl of dust, that's called a dust devil. Yeah. And they don't last. Leaves do that. Yeah, leaves. So. It, it, yeah, it's just, it's invisible unless it moves something like leaves or a bag. Mm -hmm. But Mars has those too. I was just going to say, wasn't there something on Mars? <laughs> like something. Jupiter you couldn't stand on. It'd be an issue. Be... You'd fall through clouds and then liquid helium and it'd be awkward. Yeah, <laughs> weather pattern. Um, Not to mention the pressure that would crush you after you melted. So we'll focus on the Earth's atmosphere. The other thing, though, is I want you to um, ultimately from this course be able to kind of differentiate between weather and climate. And I think we're all maybe a little guilty of saying... Um, of implying climate, even though it's just weather. Okay, so we're like, oh, the climate's changing. Well, you'd have to give it 30 years to really get a good fix on that. Okay? So the climate goes back about 30 years and kind of establishes for a general region. It wouldn't be for Keokuk, it could be for kind of this part, you know, of Missouri. The, um, yeah. What's the average climate for the last 30 years? Because yeah. that, right? right, it's a, for about, it takes about 30 years of data. Okay, so it's like a math thing. You just have a computer and you stick it in and say, okay. So it's a rolling average, though, isn't it? I mean, it keeps getting updated. Okay, so that's what climate is. But climate, like weather, looks at the same thing. So what's the general climate? Like, what's the general temperature? What's the general precipitation? You know, uh, what's the barometric pressure? But prevailing winds for that climates are for a particular time of year, too. Now, weather is the day-to-day -day thing. Okay, so weather is when you're filling out your log. That's the current conditions. And so the weather forecast would be kind of for soon, in the soon in the future. There's also a climate forecast, okay, that looks far into the future. Okay, so one of the things that both those forecasts have in common is they use computers and computer models to kind of look forward. So... So things that we may look at the Earth's atmosphere and want to get a fix on. And these actually, I kind of looked at them, and I'm pretty sure all of these are on your weather log. For one given row, you're looking at all of these things. Okay, so what's going on in the Earth's atmosphere? To get to understand it, we need to know the temperature of the air. Okay, we need to know what kind of water content the air has. Are there clouds? Have the clouds formed in the, in the air? Is it precipitating? What is the pressure of the air? We'll be talking more about pressure, actually, in this chapter. Um, is the pressure rising, falling, or steady? And the wind direction, and how fast it's the wind's blowing. So a couple of maps here. So here's the map of, of um, the United States. It's kind of a <coughs> colorful map. This is probably what I would call a mixed map. Kind of like that word. I heard it once upon a time. So... It's mixed because you have kind of an assortment of information. What is the temperature? Let's try to make out the state of Iowa. Here's the state of Iowa. Okay, so we are about there. What is our temperature kind of ish? Between zero and 10. Yeah, kind of between zero and 10. Or I might even go 10 and 20, kind of tens. So, yeah, so all of these guys are kind of between 10 and 20, right. Yep. Um, is it precipitating? It's snowing. snowing, yep. Very good. Mixed map. Uh, what is, yeah, you cannot. What is this line right here? It's a front. It is a front, very good. It's a front, it's a cold front, perfect. 
We'll be talking more about that, but that is a cold front. What is the other line? It is a warm front. Very good. A lot of times they kind of, I call it a mustache, they kind of have this central part and they're kind of pivoting. Mm -hmm. You know, the warm front's coming up, the cold front's coming down. So a lot of times they do have kind of that. <laughs> if you're colorblind, how can you tell the difference between those two fronts? Well, you can see the pattern on them separate. Like the warm front's got humps on the top, and the cold front's yes. got the Yes, the, the warm front has humps, perfect. It has, warm fronts will always kind of have um, what we call semicircles pumps, and then <laughs> cold fronts will have uh, triangles, little spiky things, in case you're colorblind or in case you have a map that's black and white. Okay. So that's kind of nice. What do the H's stand for? Exactly. I don't know if you heard that, but if you see on a map like this, an H, that stands for high pressure. And L would be low pressure, exactly. I don't see any L's here. There's one up by the warm front at the top. Oh, thanks. Oops. Come back here. <laughs> Where is it? Right between the cold and warm front. There's oh, duh, yeah. It's like the middle of the mustache. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. There's the low, central low. One other thing before I leave this, I called it a mixed bat, but probably I really also should call it a surface map. And honestly, surface maps are what we care most about. <laughs> okay, there's surface. So here's another map. Let's see if we can kind of compare the two. Maybe. Here is another surface map. It's another map. It looks a little more complicated. Yeah. Um, so let's look at it. Uh, before we look at it, I'm going to put up one more thing. So can you see where um, this actually, you see the title of the slide is station model? Mm -hmm. This is a station model. A station model is an icon where somebody has a bunch of information they want to save for a particular location, and they put it, they ball it up in a cute little icon. Now, to understand that icon, to me, you need to have an answer key <laughs> right next to it, okay? So don't worry, I'm not going to say what is, you know, but station model, okay, that's what it is. So um, let's take a look at the information that's given. One of the things I would like to go ahead and, and do on this is take um, Des Moines. Can you find Des Moines? Middle of Iowa. Uh -huh. Okay. There are two numbers there, uh, 44 and 38. Okay, and they correspond to the current temperature and the dew point temperature. So what is the current temperature in Des Moines? 44. It is 44. Very good. So it's 44 degrees Fahrenheit currently. And what is the dew point temperature? 38. It is 38. Isn't there also a wind speed in the left? Yeah, but I wanted to focus on the temperatures, the current temperature and dew point temperature. Very good. The other thing I want to focus on actually doesn't have to do with the station model, but has to do with those, can you see the green lines? And again, I kind of, those green lines are important. We'll be talking a little bit about those this semester. What they are saying, and I'm going to draw your attention to, do you see those numbers at the top there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Each number is over a line. So, for instance, the 1004 goes with this line. The 1016 goes with this line. Okay. What those numbers are are pressure. So what it's saying is, let's pick on uh, 1016. What it's saying is that all of these locations on this line have a pressure of 1,016, and it's not inches of mercury. It is millibars, or MB. So I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but that is pressure. Okay, so that's how that goes.
Right. So what? Let's find. Let's find Des Moines again. All right. Track that green line. What sort of pressure in millibars is Des Moines experiencing? What did you say? She says 1,004. Do you agree? I think so. See, what she did was to find, I know, it makes your eyes go buggy. I was like, wait, am I going right? What you do is you kind of go either way, okay, to find the number on that line. No, is it? Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, I did the same thing. No, that's, like, that's not, that's the no, wrong that's state. that's Wisconsin. Okay, this one. There you go. That's not Wisconsin. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I stick by her answer. You guys okay with that? You see where she got that? She was right the first time. 1,004 millibars. Okay. Are they jamming out there? <laughs> that was very good timing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll be talking more about surface maps, but those were both surface maps, and they give good information, and... You know, before computers, people had to actually write out all that stuff. And I guess get on your horse and, you know, take it to What? What about I know, right? So I only have one slide, and I've added a little bit to my PowerPoint slides, so I kind of have this to give out. I only have one slide on this important topic of um, something generally called the scientific method. Um, and you've probably already been exposed to it. To me, scientific method is just the all oh, that makes sense method. And it's scientific method kind of has some tests and tests and tests. And if you think it's right, go ahead and say, oh, it's right, okay? And people can go say, no, you're right, and they'll try to make you say you're not, okay? So that thing that you test is called a hypothesis. So may we all end up doing something for a career that we enjoy doing, okay? I just went over this in my last class. Well, and it's all a little bit different. I went out on the Internet, and I typed in the scientific method looking for figures, okay, and I came up with some more figures. So um, people kind of represent it a little differently. But one of the things I want you to be able to know is that a hypothesis is kind of that early on stage. And I also want you to know that there's lots of testing that's done in the scientific method. Now, you can do it in the physical sciences, like um, meteorology, physics, chemistry, the biological sciences. You can do it in the soft sciences, like sociology and psychology. You know, they do the same thing. What's that? Yes, it's forensics. Forensics is probably a cross between biological and physical sciences. But my thing here is there's lots of testing, lots of this. Dun, dun, dun. In fact, some of the pictures I chose to show you, uh, kind of summarizing the scientific method, emphasize that. And if you do that a lot of times and you, your, your observations are consistent with what you think it is, then you go ahead and you can, within your discipline, that hypothesis can be elevated to become a theory. Now, it's kind of like if you play checkers, it's kind of like um, getting to your opponent's side, okay? King. You, yeah, king me, exactly. <laughs> king me. Okay. But all the time you have, um, I mentioned in your discipline, because the, it's peers reviewed, peer reviewed. So people in your same area are trying to say, once you publish, they're trying to say, no, no, you're wrong, wrong, and you might be right. Okay, but they'll try to shoot you down, Okay. So if in your running the test, if something comes up as, oh, that did not support my hypothesis, that's okay. You have a couple choices. You can kind of modify your hypothesis or you can start from scratch. Okay. Um, I read an article recently, and um, so here's another one. You can have these next four slides. I read an article recently where it said basically scientists are cool with starting over. Scientists are cool with modifying their hypothesis. It comes with the territory. Sometimes the public, though, gets all like, oh, they don't know what they're doing. No, they're just following the scientific method, you know, so get off their gaze. So um, here's another one that kind of caught my eye. A lot of these, including this one, actually kind of just focus on the mulling it over, like within your discipline, okay, and not necessarily trying to, to elevate something from a hypothesis to a theory. 
I like this one because it shows the happy scientist or the scientist that said, oh, no, let's go back. Okay. It's funny you think about, uh, like, the planets, you know, and how uh, Pluto was a planet for years. The that was planets? Accepted. That was the theory that was accepted. Right. But then now that was more of a definition, again. but yes. The, right. She's saying that pla the planets and Pluto was a planet yeah. for a long time. Now and then, it's yeah. <laughs> Since Why 06. That it's kind of a long story. It kind of goes back to they never really defined what a planet was. So it was all wishy washy, kind of people had an idea of what a planet was. Oh, I know what a planet is. But the problem came up when they found another object that's larger than Pluto it's beyond not. Pluto orbiting the sun. You're like, dude. What's this object? Okay. But what happens is, when they started looking, there's all sorts of crumblies out there. So, and that actually, the name of that object was Eris, so you had Pluto and Eris. Okay, but if you look, there's all sorts of different crumblies. It's just leftovers. So, the solar so, system is that even larger? So, um, no, so instead of including those crumblies, they said, let's say that if there's crumblies out there, that means actually, if you look in their orbit, they haven't cleared their orbit. That's to say that they are part of something that's just never quite coalesced into a planet. If they have not cleared their orbit, eh, let's go ahead and say they're a planet, um, a dwarf planet. So that's what... They have their orbit. They have not cleared their orbit. There's other crumblies there. Otherwise, the planet's still, it's still forming? No, probably it's not going to ever form into anything larger than a dwarf planet because the whole um, accumulation process is over. But... Dwarf planet's cool. Pluto's still there. Okay. The asteroid belt would theoretically fall in these similar categories? Correct. There are two objects in the asteroid belt that when Pluto got demoted, they got promoted. <laughs> so that's Cirrus and Vesta. So they got yeah. promoted from asteroids to dwarf planets? Right. They kind of have dual status. Well, isn't, there, isn't there a theory that the asteroid belt used to be a planet itself? Let's talk about that later. Take my other course. I am really thinking about if you have um, extra credit in one course, it slops over into your other course. What well, Wouldn't that be fun? Be nice. Yeah, what the heck? So we'll see. So um, I went ahead and threw this in too because, you know, we talked about hypothesis is your best guess, and a hypothesis is something I think, what I like to think of is you go for your dream. You're like, oh, that is so awesome. You study it, and you're like, oh, I think all things considered, this is what's going on behind the scenes. And then it may be elevated to a theory. But there are these other things called laws. And be careful that what you're trying to prove is not really already just a law. Like Newton's laws of motion. I mean, it's just the way the universe is, right? Um, the gas laws, not Murphy's law. <laughs> just the way, Murphy's law? OK, but laws are just kind of fundamental, basic um, to how the universe is. Just <laughs> right. Um, so this subject actually is talking about how do, when we go to the Weather Channel, where do they get that data that they post for Keokuk, Iowa? And they get them kind of automatically sent to them from these little cluster of measuring devices known as ASOSs. And I'm going to show you some pictures. I'm actually going to go to the website. I better start pulling that up, right? Yes. <laughs> Automatic surface observing systems, A sauces, automated, automated surface observing systems. And you may have seen them. Next time you're near an airport, look to see if you see these, okay? Because honestly, they're usually maintained and operated by the FAA. Oh, so the tower Mm-hmm. There. Can you see this right here? Yeah. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Okay, so this is like... Um, a set of measuring devices that can automatically, every hour, send stuff to all over. So when an airplane has an onboard uh, weather system, they don't have their own onboard. They're actually connected to the ASOS. They might have um, um, kind of both. I bet, they, I bet they're measuring upper elevation, and these are surface, so they probably have both. But there's a map of where these things are, and not so surprising... If we click on Iowa, Keokuk has an airport, right? Yeah. yeah. Small, <laughs> That's okay. So, 
so down here, actually, this would be Keokuk. What's this green one? Very good. What's the gray one? Burlington. Burlington. Perfect. The difference between the green and the gray is kind of a slight thing, so um, we'll go on to Keokuk. Um, it's yeah. Let's see. It's not. So the green is actually, if you track it down, it stands for, instead of um, surface, um, automated surface observing system, it stands, there's a W, so automated weather observing system. And it, um, I don't know, I didn't track those down, but we can go back. Yeah, um, and I'll look at that before I leave. But the other thing is, um, this is like hourly data, or no, it's not hourly, it's more than that. What is it? You think 20 minutes? Yeah, uh, 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes. Well, Actually, in some cases, yeah. it's not. It's not consistent? I can't see the whole thing, but. Yeah. Well, I see the time. There's two, there's two eight o'clock, so there in my mind. Yeah. Or is that, oh, that's just for the area, that's not a different areas. Yeah. So, yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. If you're filling out your weather logs, you know, this is a possibility, but to get historical data, but I think it might drive me nuts if I was doing it. So I think there are other, other things. If you're filling out your weather log and you miss a day, don't start all over. <laughs> okay, go to try to find that information. Now, if you miss a week, probably start all over. Okay, so the red and the blue. Let's see if it has it down here. Okay, it looks like the red is the weather, um, the weather system, but it's just got a different, uh, so instead of an ASOS, it's an AWOS. So what I read, and it was just kind of quickly, is that um, the ASOSs are more sophisticated. So. What's that? AWOS. AWOS. Oh, well, look it up. <laughs> um, so aren't those just adorable? I think so too. So this is an extra slide I put in um, to go ahead and I was curious where in the government does our, um, the folks that do our weather, where do they fit in? And they fit under the Department of Commerce. I know. Really? Really. I know. And so, yeah. I'm going to make that go away. This second uh, organizational chart just is similar to the first organizational chart. Shh. But I kind of thought, and I, I kept trying to track it down. Have you heard, like I have, that, that NASA does a lot with uh, NOAA? And, and they do, but they organizationally are not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I meant they have joint um, efforts because NASA has put missions in orbit to the Earth that that we really want for weather and climate. So it doesn't have to do with space missions. So, well, we're all one big family. I just thought there was organizationally more of a, a line. But okay. So um, clear at the end of the course, we're going to talk about uh, what were the conditions of the atmosphere like a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, okay? There are different ways to get to that, but one of the ways is to, um, we can do ice cores and we can also do cores um, in the ocean, okay? Assuming that kind of this is the newest gas content and critter content going back in time as you go down the core sample. So. Would a the carbon monoxide of the ocean floor, the, the saturated stuff, uh, nitrogen, I think it is. What it what? The nitrogen beds, I think it's called. Um, I like would think that your core sample is going to capture whatever the gas you, content you, you, was. You know what I'm speaking of, though. Like, uh, no. Frozen nitrogen on the bottom of the deepest trenches. Yeah. I would, I mean, I think, I know as you go down in elevation, you get different gas content. Possibly so. Stable. So the next thing we need to talk about is to kind of dive into a little more the Earth's atmosphere. And so that one of the, I have some slides coming up, but the Earth's atmosphere, it's just like so baby compared to the Earth itself. It's amazing. Um, and we talk about the atmosphere 
Um, of course, that's the gases that are gravitationally stuck to the Earth. But there's other spheres going on within the atmosphere, because we have the geosphere, I guess. It's not going in with the, at the atmosphere. But this is the geosphere. Okay, I'm stepping on it. Um, the hydrosphere is water anywhere associated with kind of our water system, or excuse me, our Earth system. And biosphere means life. Okay. Cool. Okay. So um, they are not independent of each other. So clearly with this ocean kind of lapping up against the shore, we have a hydrosphere and the geosphere doing their thing. With regard, maybe you already know this, but I think this is amazing. With regard to all the water in the, our Earth system, okay, most of it is salt water. Less than 3% of it is what we call fresh water or not salt water. And then your text kind of breaks up that 2.8%. And where does that fall? Well, most of it is tied up in glaciers. I don't know about you, but I don't have access to that water. Yeah. But it's good, though. That is good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, and then after glaciers, groundwater, which we could tap into, right? Yeah. Well, they do a lot. I mean, spring water. Yeah, spring water. yeah, groundwater we have access to, and then the kind of the the stream or the surface water actually can be broken up into that small fraction. You know, that small sliver. That's actually part of. We're going to talk about something called the um, the hydrological cycle. Hydro kind of meaning water. Cycle meaning kind of you know water mm -hmm. rains, it evaporates, okay, forms clouds, and it rains. That's the hydrological cycle. That's pretty unreal. You think of the freshwater lakes, too. if you take the freshwater lakes and barely even 1%, if that, it's not even 1%, uh, if you take the freshwater lakes, you got to consider the Great Lakes. Right. That's yeah, not it's not fair. I mean, yeah. that the I think the freshwater lakes are not, they're spread out to, to where they are. They're kind but of, they're hundreds, and some of them are hundreds of feet deep. Mm -hmm. That would say, yeah, that there's a lot of water in the oceans and in the glaciers and, yeah. Well, there's a lot of water in the oceans. It's just more amazing with the groundwater. Yeah. I think so. So the next slide is where I kind of talk about kind of the magnitude of the Earth's atmosphere versus the geosphere. We're going to talk more about layers of the Earth's atmosphere, but just to kind of get you, get the ball rolling, that says troposphere. So when I draw the atmosphere, it works pretty good because you'll kind of see me use the convention that I was taught. That is the geosphere, okay? And then anything up above this would be the atmosphere. And we have a start of a layer here. This actually layer of air is what we call the troposphere. Anybody know what's above the troposphere? Mesosphere. Not quite the mesosphere. That's the next one. Stratosphere. Stratosphere, yep. Yeah, yeah then the stratopause, and then the, the next layer itself is the mesosphere. How about the last one? Thermosphere. Very good. And the, the last layer of the Earth's atmosphere, not drawn to scale here, right? is um, actually kind of peters into outer space, and we call that the thermosphere, as in heat. Okay. What's that? So that's where most of the heating happens from the radiation in the sun. Um, the radiation is kind of trapped in different areas, but I don't know. We'll kind of see if. So these are the pictures I added. So this is from the International Space Station kind of looking at the, at the geosphere and the atmosphere. This was taken from one of the space shuttle missions, Atlantis. Sunrise. We found it. I don't think we ever lost that one. Um, yeah. So, and that one's just credited to NASA. But you hopefully you kind of get a sense maybe for just how skinny the atmosphere is compared to the geosphere. So, what's that? What? So a few more slides to talk about. Um, I told you this, did I ever tell you this ear is bad? This ear is pretty good. <laughs> so I'm like, what? I'm kind of new at this. 
But I have a few slides here to kind of show you how the different spheres interact. Of course, the fishies would be biosphere, life, so would the trees. The fishes are interacting in the hydrosphere, and the trees are interacting with the geosphere and the atmosphere. Okay. And technically the hydrosphere because it rains. Yes, true. So we will pick up here on Friday. So nothing is due Monday. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing is due uh, Monday. But go ahead and read chapters one and two, kind of get started. Okay? Yeah, I thought it was super interesting, the uh, things I never knew.